and this is an opportunity that you need to use um, to the fullest because um, some of us we some of us some of us we never had this opportunity actually so at least you have it now how am i going to do this okay so it's, 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 it's a very good thing that uh, you're attending the the classes so i'm going to take you in the introduction to human anatomy and another coordinator or the facilitator will come and take you um, through the introduction to histology where we're going to do historical techniques and another connector will come through and introduce another topic that's how we're going to work around we are exceeding gratefully for the privilege that's good thank you so i'm about to share my screen i hope you, um, you're able to see my screen someone to confirm Not yet. So I have, a, I have a question, sir. Okay. Are you hopeful? Okay, the time will be given when you'll be asking. Uh, let's for now let's start the topic and then at the end of it all we'll allow the questions. We'll allow the questions. Okay. I was trying to use my PC now it's easy to turn. I was trying to use my PC now it seems my PC is done. Are you able to see the sharing? Yes. Okay. Yes. Very clear, is it? Yes, it's clear. Okay, just a little uh, alluded to area. I am Mr. Charles MC, popularly known. My real name is Mwanangandu Charles Jumwe. Okay, and I am one of your mentors for this course, HAN 2220 or 2210. Okay, so. Uh, we interact um, where where we can, and I really hope that he. Uh, sorry, uh, let me just finish this. What I'm doing. So the notes that I'm going to use, some of them I got them from the slides for your well noted lecturer, and a very vigilant lecturer by the name of Dr. Mutare, okay? So Dr. Mutare is one of the lecturers that will be taking you in anatomy, and he is one of the people that will make your school life to be very nice and uh, memorable, because you will make sure that you do the right thing. I don't know how I can do this to my thing, it is disturbing me, right? Anyway. Um, after I'm not a, but then I will try. Okay, so Dr. Mtare is one of the lecturers that will be taking you in anatomy. So you have Dr. Mtare, you are going to have a Dr. Mtemwa and Dr. Mkape Mkape, unless or otherwise they include another one that we don't know. But also we have Dr. EBK, who is a, a, the, the Dean of School of Medicine. He is also a lecturer, but now, nowadays he is a Dean, he doesn't uh, lecture, but he also lectures the anatomy. So we're going to do introduction to anatomy and the nomenclature that will help you to enjoy medicine, okay? So I really hope that you're going to enjoy and you ask the questions that you want to understand. So what are we going to do, you see? So this thing will be keeping on uh, disturbing me. I don't know how to stop it. Anyway. So um introduction to anatomy of course we did some um, we gave you the books that are needed and at the end of these slides we're going to have questions of which we're going to answer together and also the recommended books where the notes were jotted down from okay 
uh, any of any of okay. So what is anatomy? We're going to start from that point of view. I'm someone who speaks very slow but very fast. Huh? So if you don't understand, you can always ask Dr. Lilo, who will always see you uh, behind there because I'm just using one gadget for now. Okay. So anatomy come from the word, uh, the word which is a, a Greek word, and this word is anatomy. Okay. Let me see if I can find a pointer or something. Anatomy. Okay. So that's a Greek word. Anatomy. So anatomy is broken down. Can I write here? No, I can't. Okay. So anatomy is uh, oh, my brain. So I'm trying to see how I can okay. Mm. Okay. Mm. Anyway. So anatomy is see, broken down into two words. That is ana. Ana means upon or on. And then tome means cut or dissect. So in this uh, course, it's the only course that you be required to cut and um, um, observe some structures. Okay, that's why it is called the anatomy. So ana means upon or on. And then tome that is cutting or dissecting, okay? Meaning that it is a branch of biology and medicine that studies the structures, okay, of living things and how they relate to each other, okay? So structures of the human body will be studied by dissecting, okay? When you dissect, you look at something or you look on something, I don't know how you can put it, but really, what we need to know is that it is simply a branch of biology. And this branch of biology deals with studying of the structures, of body structures, okay, of the human being per se, because you are medical student, okay? So we have a lot of branches of this anatomy. When you go to veterinary medicine, you're going to find anatomy. And to veterinary basin, it will be called uh, zoology, okay, or zootom, okay. And when you go to the agriculture there, you're going to find it where it is called deep plant anatomy, okay. That's the name which is in the brackets there. And you guys, you are doing human anatomy, okay. So we are different from these other colleagues, but really we are one and the same people. But the only difference is that we are doing it in different, you know, fields, and that's why we differ, okay? And as we said that uh, um, this um, th this course has three um, uh, branches, that is gross anatomy, histology, and embryology, okay? Um, really, when we talk about the... Uh, uh, Cross anatomy, it can also be known as the macroscopic because you're studying the structures that you are able to see with your naked eyes without the aid of the microscope. That's why you call it gross because you're able to touch, you're able to, 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 you know, to note down some things such as when you get a hand, you're able to see that this is a hand, the leg, this is the leg. You cut, you're able to see that, no, this is a, a bone, this is a spleen, this is a what? That is a gross anatomy. And then the histology uh, can also be known as microscopic because uh, you use uh, um, an, uh, um, a, a microscope for you to study it. And then embryology, uh, we are just simply dealing with the development of the egg to the fetus. So we we'll look at how the egg and the sperm would do fuse to form a zygote. And when a zygote is formed, what comes next? What happens in the, at day one, day two, up to when the fetus is formed 
and at the point where you have a baby in your hands, okay, we we'll look at this. At the end of it, oh, we're going to look at the congenital diseases, okay, or disorders, congenital disorders. What goes wrong, and what usually happens if something goes wrong, then, then you'll be able to appreciate the development of a human being. So the gross anatomy, uh, in a nutshell, you study without magnification, okay? You study without magnification, and you are looking at the anatomical structures. I said anatomical structures, so we're going to look at how these anatomical structures are identified, okay? Histology, histo, we can, uh, we can break the word histology in two. Let me see if I can find a pen. Docs, are you there? How can I use this pen? I've forgotten. Eh? Okay, I can see. Now, I don't know how to, to move this. Ah, you can okay. use the arrows on the left. Okay. I mean, on the right, right bottom of the screen to navigate between pages. Okay, thank you. Okay, so. All right, so here we are. So we're saying uh, histology. We talked about gross anatomy. So here, these things that are, are highlighted, and these are the key points that you need to jot down. The question might be realized from there, okay? The good part with anatomy department, they give you the answer. So those are the answers. Everything that is in red, black, you just know that that is a hazard, okay? So histology, you can see there, we've broken it down into histos. Histology, we are talking about tissues, and larger is studying. So histology is the study of tissues. And you know that for you to study a tissue, you need the microscope. Those are very small, okay, to be studied with your naked eyes. Now, these tissues, uh, regardless of how big the, your body is, they are actually summarized in two, four, or categorized in two, four categories, okay? Many tissues or basic tissues, we can call them. So we have the epithelial tissue, we have the connective tissue, we have a muscle tissue and a nervous tissue. I remember one day in, a, in my inbox, someone came in of your colleagues to say, but sir, how can I know that this topic falls under histology, this topic falls under embryology, this topic what? So here we're talking about the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue and nervous tissue. These are the things that you're going to cover in your histology and other things that to enable you to, that will necessitate you to actually understand these structures. At the end of it all, we know that we can also study the, the cell because the cell makes up a tissue. So the study of the cell is what we call cytology, okay? Don't forget these points, ladies and gentlemen, they are very important in your journey, okay? So cytology is where you study um, a cell as an individual cell, okay? It is called the cytology, okay? And then this leads us to the concept that we know properly from grade 12 or whatever. We call it cell organization, okay? So cell organization, remember it starts from anyone who has an idea, who still remembers the cell organization for grade 12? Yes. Anyone to come in? Cell so organization from gate 12, the one that we covered in gate 12 under the cell. I think that our teachers gave us. Yes. Uh, Dr. Ezra. Uh, um, oh, okay. So. From a cell, we have a tissue, a tissue. Okay. From a tissue, from a then we have a, an organ. From an organ, then we have a Can system. I speak? Okay. Yes, please go ahead. I think it starts from the cell and goes to the tissues, organ, system, then organism. Exactly. So, when we talk about histology, we will be able to understand what a cell is and what a tissue is, and then 
gross anatomy will help us to understand organisms, systems, and an organ, sorry, who, the, the histology will help us to understand the cells, uh, will also help us to understand the tissues, and then from the growth aspect, it will help us to understand the organs of the human body, the systems of the human body, as well as the organism which is the human itself, okay? So that is what we're expecting from knowing uh, these, um, uh, uh, I mean, the, the anatomy, okay? After that, we have embryology, which will help us to understand what happens before the tissues are formed, what happens before the cells are formed, okay? Where now we have the cells that are fusing, and we have the, 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 the you know, the, the sex cell and the, the female and the male coming together to form a zygote from a zygote, we have an embryo forming, okay? So, which means that uh, you must be able to know this part. So, I've already talked about this part, and those are the things that you are talking about. It's just that uh, the, the arrows are not uh, positioned in the good uh, positions because I'm using the phone. Okay, I was supposed to use the laptop, now it is down, okay? So, that's the embryology, okay? Developmental anatomy. So everything else there you can read. However, at the end of it all, when the baby is developing in your, in, 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 the, in the womb, okay? Or in the uterus, or ever since the, 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 the baby is being formed from the egg, so on and so forth, during the uh, menstrual cycle, whatever, all that process, we have what we call congenital diseases, congenital disorders, congenital disorders, okay? So congenital disorders happens if something goes wrong in the uh, uterus, okay? And those, the study of these congenital disorders is what we call teratology. So we are going to study teratology at a later time, okay? What happens if something goes wrong during the development of the fetus, okay? You are going to study that. Wow. Anatomy is not alone. You study anatomy in a tandem with physiology and biochemistry, okay? Now, this is where now confusion comes in. Someone would think when you study anatomy, you've already studied the physiology, okay? Because anatomy and physiology, they're almost the same. It's just that the only difference is that the physiology would tell you in details about the tissues and organs and how they work and the mechanisms, what, what, what happens inside the cell, what makes it to function, okay? And also you will learn about what will do happen if something is abnormal and how would you know that something is abnormal. But anatomy will just tell you to say, no, this is a river. And then physiology will tell you to say, no, the river works like this. And then biochemistry will tell you about the processes that take place in the river. Okay. So these three are studied in tandem. Okay. They are studied, they are studied hand in hand. However, don't make a mistake of studying anatomy. They say maybe you're studying the, uh, the, nervous, the nervous tissue, uh, the nerve tissue in the anatomy. And then when you go to physiology, you find the nervous system or the nerve tissue also, because also there we have the nerve, okay? Or uh, uh, how do you call it? Neurophysiology, okay? They are almost the same, but the only difference is that in physiology, you go in the details to look at what happens, what actually happens for you to, trans, to, to transmit uh, the chemical impulses. But for anatomy, you just tell you to say, this is a nerve, and the nerve is like this and this and this. It will never tell you about it, the details in it, okay? So out of all this, we have to know that anatomy is the chief of all the courses that we are taking this year and the courses that as we are taking and we can say it's a foundation of medicine okay it's a foundation of medicine and this was actually discovered by a very gigantic man called andreas visarius okay 
in the book that he had called the human copares fabrica rubric scepter okay so this book was published in 1543 so now this is a potential question that usually comes and i'll show you that the question is there okay even as this question came uh, what is happening now okay even as the question came i've been seeing this, the, the same question over the years and years sometimes they'll ask you about the book the human copies fabric receptum when was it published you say 1543 sometimes they'll tell you to say ah who is the father of anatomy and then they'll put the names andreas vesarius would be one of the names and some uh, few noted individuals so you just know that uh, Andre Andreas Vesarius is one of the fathers, or he is a father of anatomy. Okay, when he published the, the, the book The Human Copernicus Fabrica Libri Septum. Okay, um, maybe there's the, I can allow one question. Maybe there's one who has a question or something. Um, I have a question. Yes. I wanted to find out, you said uh, there are some similar topics uh, that are actually found in anatomy and physiology. So what happens if I was asked a question maybe in anatomy, and then if I was to apply maybe the concept that is in physiology over the same topic, is it going to be wrong? Are they going, is there any bigger difference between the explanations in these okay. uh, courses? That's good. So, uh, anatomy and physiology is just like you are positioned at East Park or uh, just there by Park Park Station there. They were told to go in town, okay? Anatomy will be the first thing that you do, maybe it will take you up to maybe uh, long acres there. It ends there. And then physiology will take you at, into town. In short, what I'm trying to say is that uh, anatomy and physiology they are almost the same. Now the only difference is that physiology will go further and tell you about the tiny details of it. But really, there is no harm in giving the explanation. You, you actually wouldn't even realize to, to say are giving the explanation from physiology or from anatomy because they are almost the same. I think I've answered your, uh, your question. Eh? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. So therefore, if this is important, and the foundation of all these, what we've talked about. Then we are saying anatomy is very important, okay? It is very important to who? For, physi for physiotherapists, those guys that you wear within first year, you have, anyway, dentists, for as long as someone is doing a healthy science program, anatomy is very important. Why? because it is involved in an aspect of patient treatment that begins with analysis of clinical science. So clinical science will begin with the anatomy. Which one? What is the problem? You are able to actually give it those, okay? Now at the end of it all, um, we should also know that the ability to interpret a clinical observation, okay, correctly, okay? is the end point of anatomical stand, understanding. For you to interpret the, uh, the clinical observations that you see to say you are trying to come up with a problem, your a patient comes to you, okay? You must have full foundation in the anatomy. Therefore, anatomy is one uh, course that you need to understand but not memorize, okay? In as much as we have a lot of uh, uh, big words or whatever, it is important to know the some, you know, to understand it so that you are able to apply it clinically, okay? And also that will enable you to observe and visualize because anatomy is all about the observation and the visualizing, okay? Um, so I think this is what I was talking about. I've just explained it and uh, we can move on. How can we, how can gross anatomy be studied? That's a question that we should answer now. 
how can gross anatomy be studied? How can gross anatomy be studied? So, we've always said that this anatomy simply means to cut and dissect. Now, if we are cutting and dissecting, then we are said that the study of anatomy should be linked to dissection. Okay? So, gross anatomy, ladies and gentlemen, is all about going to the DR and dissect. Once you dissect, you know those parts properly. Believe me, you, even if you are, you, you, I don't know how I can put it, you are bad in the anatomy. You can still pass, ladies and gentlemen, once you know the structures that you are dissecting and you know all the things that you are doing, then it is easy to pass the anatomy. Now, what is happening with my phone? Anyway, okay? Because it, uh, you can only study it and understand it when you see it and touch it, and that is the gross anatomy, okay? And now, you have to dissect the cadavers, okay? I think you you've been hearing about cadavers, so on and so forth. Okay. And we are preserved and put in a room called the dissection room. So you'll be going to the dissection room and find these dead people and start cutting, okay? But the, the unique name that we use uh, specimens or cadavers. So you students will be able to uh, cut and see the, the, the structures. But however, because of the number, you won't be cutting. People will be cutting for you and you, your, 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 your task is just to observe and individualize and name the structures and you know the structures. For those structures will be required in your practical exams, okay? And practical tests, which are more or less carry the same marks as the, um, uh, the theory papers. So these dissections can be done, okay? Uh, sometimes replaced by the prosected cadavers we will know what a prosected cadavers is so prosected cadavers is what you guys will be using because we're a lot so prosected cadavers is where a cadaver is already operated on by an experienced person and just leave it open and you just go and study the structures and then plus netted cadavers here is where now you embalm the body and infuse it with the, uh, um, the embalming materials of which should be um, taught at a later time in the uh, histology, probably that's the next session on uh, Medusa. Plastic models, I think as a department, we, 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 we actually, sorry, am I, am I audible? Yes. Okay. yes. We I think we we uploaded yes, some. I think we uploaded some plastic models on the Medusa Moodle, so you can go there and download them. I think they are there. If they are not there, just after we are done with this meeting, we'll be able to upload them. And then for uh, the, the fourth thing that can be done is the. 3D visual images on the LCD. Those things that he, the LCD are those the things that he, are in the TOC's lecture theaters. Since you guys were a lot as we were, you won't be coming to the DR to have practical exams. Instead, what they'll be using is see the point number four here. 3D visual images where they come to the DR and they capture the images handy. Uh, project them on the LCDs in the TOCs in there, okay? And you'll be asked to identify the structures within uh, 90 seconds. So you should be able to do that. Very, yeah, it's something which is very hard. So it requires that you need to make it, um, a Diara a friend, okay? Because those guys, we call them as the uh, dead teachers, or I don't know how you call it anyway. So that's uh, a, 
an example of something which was dissected on okay i know that all of you here you are medical students unless you are not a medical student you are free to leave the meeting okay so what you are able to see in that picture is the axilla in your armpit okay the language that everyone understands is the armpit okay but as the anatomist we call it an axilla okay and what we are seeing there being held by the forceps is what we call the brachial plexus so you'll be able to study all those structures by dissecting and identifying them and that's why there is that kind of forceps holding that my thing so there that person was <coughs> identifying okay was identifying that that structure so, so those are the branches of the brachial plexus and this is the artery the axillary artery okay the axillary artery these are the branches of the brachial plexus and here we're going to have the cords of the brachial plexus all those things you know them as you start going to the dr okay and then prosected i think i've already talked about the prosected i've talked about the plasmated you read after we send the notes those are the plastic models that i was talking about you can see there okay and he, mostly when he, dr mkema comes to teach about skeletons she will come with the, the bones here probably she will have the she will have the skeleton she will come with it okay she will come with it which is a plastic okay so these things are important because they will help you to visualize and try to observe images in the living bodies they are very important so you need to look for that document that has the models and you try they will help you they will go a long way how can we okay so now we can start anatomy either by regional approach or systematic approach okay we can study uh, this either by region or systematic so we say region we are talking about if you want to start from the head you start from the head and the neck from the head and the neck you come to the abdomen and the thorax and then from the thorax you come to the 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 the, the, the extremities so thus these are the things that i'm talking about here okay so these are the regions of the body at a later date uh you be they will teach you about these ones and the body cavities so you know them don't worry okay don't worry uh don't worry so systems we know about the systems we learned them in get d 12 okay that we have 11 systems we have cardiovascular system we have respiratory system we have muscular muscular skeletal system we have uh, digestive system we have urinary except that this one can also be split into two where you have uh, uh, the muscular system and the, the skeletal system okay to have 11 so all together there are 11 if this one is split but as they are they are 12 so you can choose to do that but however of all these the approach which is very favorable is the regional because for the system, you can just imagine, let's talk about maybe a <clears throat> blood circulatory system. It starts from the heart, it goes round, so on and so forth. For you to start studying it, it will take you time because you will you, be required to go. Then by then you follow it where it goes, you go to the leg, it comes back into whatever, you check it. So it will be a bit difficult, okay? But for the region, you, you just say, okay, let me start from the head. You start whatever that is in the head, you come to the thorax, just like that. So the regional one is easier and much, much inevitable, okay? Now, of all the things that we've talked about, um, what is important is to, anat to understand anatomical positions. Because now, we are taking a different dimension of biology to go deeper into your body you can't tell someone to say no i have a i don't know anyway you are going to understand uh, as we are progressing okay as you are progressing so we have to understand the human body and we have to give the terms and we need to have a 
the we need to have we need to have uh, um, we need to have the language that will help us to understand anatomy or if you go to to to, to uk someone says something you're able to understand so you have to understand the anatomical position okay so that is the, the pictures that i've just see displayed that is what we call anatomical position okay that is what we call anatomical position now i have to define it for you maybe someone will say what is anatomical position so the anatomical position is the standard d reference position okay of the body used to describe the locational structures so standard reference position is what you call anatomical position and this method is a standardized method okay of observing or imaging the body okay that allows precise and consistent anatomical references whether you are in america you are in uk you are wherever you are for as long as you are uh, on the earth somewhere okay you must be able to appreciate the the the, the 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 body parts using the anatomical position because the reference will be the same okay the reference will be the same the reference will be the same now what is this uh, anatomical position the anatomical position requires that uh, someone should be should do stand upright okay with the feet together okay feet together toes pointing forward hands by the side with the fingers straight and together at the end of it or your thumb should be at 90 degrees with other fingers and your eyes okay your eyes should be focused at a distant object that's why when you go to the clinic they will tell you to look at the door okay because they want your eyes to be fixed at a distant object and what else should do you know the mouth closed don't open your mouth with a new a neutral face expression but people like me who are angry i don't know how we are put because you are just you're already angry now it is very difficult for you to actually be with a neutral uh you know you with, with a neutral face you're always angry just like that anyway that's a joke okay so you should make sure that your face is neutral you are not angry or oh, you're not angry <laughs> you're not aspiring so on and so forth you just have to be neutral that's what we call anatomical position and then we're talking about the infra orbital margin infra orbital margin this one should be in the horizontal same horizontal plane as the external orchestric meters okay or external auditory canal okay so the infra orbital is that's my thing just beneath your eye that's my big thing that it protrudes uh, let me see if i can find it here that protrudes okay there at that position and you can see that so this is the um, infra orbital and the ear is what we call external orchestric meters okay so these two should be in the horizontal and you can see this man how he's looking straight okay the the hands and the finger the, the, the thumb is at 90 degrees everything is straight okay and the woman there you can see okay and this is anterior in a better position in a better positions now you can see that here i was talking about the anterior posterior so on and so forth these are what we call anatomical planes okay when someone once someone is okay, has stood in the anatomical position then we need some reference imaginary lines of of which we can use to refer to the body part Okay, to the body parts and those are what you call anatomical planes okay 
so we have these anatomical planes about three are major. We have coronal plane, which will divide the body, okay? And it is oriented vertically to divide the body into anterior and posterior, or go back and forward, which is mushe mushe, back and forward. But in anatomy, we're going to say anterior and the posterior, okay? Then we'll have the sagittal plane, which will um, divide your body into right and left okay this one sorry sagittal plane so to divide your body into right and the left and then last but not the least is what we call transverse or horizontal or axial planes this one will divide your body into superior and inferior parts okay superior and inferior parts okay up and down which is okay so these are the planes that will be referring to in anatomy. So you can see there, we have the coronal plane or sometimes called the uh, uh, frontal plane. Then that is the sagittal plane. And this is the transverse plane. So the sagittal will divide your body into two equal halves, that is right and left. And then the coronal will cut your body into the anterior and posterior. And then we have the transverse plane, which will cut your body into upper and down, or inferior and the superior. So inferior, inferior is down there, superior is down up there, okay? And then, so those are the, um, really I wanted you to, uh, we are going to answer this together. But for now, let's pause a bit on this one. Then we move a bit. So now, after all this, the unless there's someone who has a question on what we've talked about so far, when it is 21, you can just tell me that. In fact, when it is, uh, what time is it, Doc Cirillo? Uh, when it is, okay, when it is 21, you can let me know so that we can end there and hopefully we are going to to push a bit okay we have to know the direction terms the two they are very important directional terms okay so directional terms are used okay to locate one part of the body precisely relative to another and to reduce length of explanations. So these ones will help us to reduce the length of explanation when we're trying to give an explanation of the body part, okay? And those are what we have there. Anterior, anterior is the, 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 the so the anterior, uh, did I show you the anterior? The anterior is the, the, the front part of you, okay? The front part of you is what we call the anterior. Let me see if I'm able to go back. Okay, so the anterior is this front part here. Okay, this is what we call anterior. The front part is what we call anterior. Front part is yes. And then behind is what we call ventral or dorsal aspect. So anterior is the um front part of you it, it is also known as the the, the 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 ventral okay it's also known as the, the ventral then the posterior can also be known as the, the dorsum aspect and then we have medial and lateral medial we're talking about near the sagittal plane towards your inner part okay that's what you call medial and then lateral is outer okay then we have superior, superior is the upper part of your body, and then inferior. So we are, we are talking about these ones in reference to the planes that we have. Then we have the proximal, proximal we're talking about the part which is near to the trunk, okay? Near to the trunk, and then the distal, we're talking about the part which is far from the trunk, okay? Um, cranial, we're talking about the head part. Caudal, we're talking about going down there your legs okay is what we call caudal rostral okay we are going to find also this 
um, uh, same rostral, which means rotating somehow. We are going to look at it at a later time. Okay, superficial. All these you need to know them: epistrato, contralateral, and bilateral, intermediate, central, peripheral, and internal or external. Some of them you know them, some you don't know. But we will try to cover what you don't know. Any question? Maybe someone has a question. Um, <coughs> yes, there's a hand from David. Okay. David, you can go ahead. Uh, uh, hello? Yes, please. Yes, could you could you kindly repeat what you said in uh, prosecuted and plasinated cardinals? I didn't quite get the point there. Prosecuted cadavers and plasinated cadavers. Yes. So prosecuted cadavers are the cadavers or the dead human bodies uh, operated on or dissected by the professional or experienced uh, anatomist, okay? Just uh, like as you are going to study, the demonstrators will be dissecting on the cadavers. After they dissect them, you, you, go, you just go and observe the structures. So those types of cadavers where they are already operated on by an experienced anatomist are uh, what we call prosected cadavers. And then plasnated are the embalmed bodies, or rather the preserved bodies using the uh, the embalming materials. Okay, and they are not cut. They are not uh, they are not dissected on. You have to start dissecting on your own. So that's the difference. Prosected, they are dissected by the experienced, and then uh, plasnated are these which are which are preserved, and you have to start. Uh, from point A to dissect on your own. So I think for now, we are going to end here, looking at the time, and others probably they want to do something, and then we can allow the questions now. Right, there's a hand from, um, <clears throat> is this a James? James, you can go ahead with the question. Yes, sir. Thank you. I need to ask. Um, uh, so I've seen a lot of information around just over a great information. So like this information, is it necessary to know for an ex to answer in an exam what plus the cadavers is, or is that for us to know to know as we practice? Or when we go into a beer or something like that, are we going to be asked to walk away? All right, thank you. So as I said, when I started, is that uh, whichever way that is the underlying, or that which is uh, um, highlighted in these notes, is important to know. You have to know them. Okay you meet them in the mcqs okay you're going to meet them in the mcqs that's why they are highlighted okay so once something is highlighted in the department of anatomy just know that that is a possible question uh, or we call it a possible mcq as the dr mkape say so that is a possible M mcq so whichever word that is uh uh, uh highlighted or underlined just so that is a possible mcq okay i hope your question is answered it's answered thank you sir thank you All right. another question Dr. miriam is a question oh yes thank you uh you mentioned about practical tests yes that they carry the same amount as uh the written test at the end of the day so how often do we get right practical tests yeah in 
made to okay so usually you are going to have one test for gross anatomy and one test for um histology okay and then you are going to have uh, uh one exam uh, practical exam for anatomy also practical exam for histology i hope your question is answered so that is the uh, decided upon by the uh, course coordinator whether we're going to have 20 tests or 50 tests that's a decision that they make here from the department but usually they'll give you one test from the gross and then one test from the histology one exam from gross one exam from histology all right thank you okay another question Yes, Dr. Nora. Nora, you can come in. You can speak up, Nora. Your mic is on. Nora, was that a hand? Are you still in? Okay, there's another hand from uh, this one. Is it Chimwe, Chimwe Mwishanda? You can go ahead, Chimwe. Chanda, you um, can go ahead. Yes, uh, I just wanted to know where I can get the document from, the one who was using to teach. So the document will be shared uh, probably on the site. Uh, that will be dependent upon the decision from the IT department. If they will share it in the group, where well and good but also most likely to be shared on the on the on the medusa uh, site so you can you can have access to it all right thanks thank you all right uh, thank you very much um maybe one last thing that um i just want to show you people um for those of you who have not yet um, like made an account on the Medusa site, um, you can go ahead um, on the link. I'll share it in the group. Um, the Medusa site. When you go to the Medusa site, you'll be able to see uh, several courses that are there. And one of them is Basic and Applied Human Anatomy and Development, which is uh, the course that you were taking today and in this particular course you'll be able to see um, the first section will be the recommended books and the first one is Grey's Anatomy you can click on it and you'll be, done, be able to download it the second one is uh, uh, the Atlas of Histology is very important in histology and then we've got the three volumes of Chaureza and uh, Charesia's uh, Human Anatomy Volumes 1, 2, and 3 are very important, um, especially when you start your GRs. They are concise and direct to the point, and um, they have underlined or overlaid information in a way that is um, make it e making it easy for you to actually memorize or be able to understand easily and grasp the concept um, on point. And then there's also Langman's Medical Embryology, which is a very important book uh, 
literally you notice that this is the basic uh, book that you will be recommended in in biology it's very important and that's where most of the notes are actually extracted and then we've got also Janquila's uh, basic uh, histology it's very good as well and um, direct to the point and um, uh, i would actually say the next uh, topic in anatomy will be extracted in the first chapter of Janquila. So you do good to go ahead on the site, create an account. If you fail to create an account or if you uh, face challenges in creating the account, um, you can inbox me. Yeah, you can inbox me and we'll be able to actually um, attend to your query on how to create an account. It's very easy and direct. You don't need anything um, to create the account. You don't need to pay anything. You just go ahead and then the notes for today um, you're able to find them in this file here <clears throat> there's also this other um, uh, diagram of, of a plastic cadaver that is there uh, showing the uh, coronal plane the horizontal plane the surgical the sagittal plane and then we've got also this other file that contains the questions that will help you review today's um, today's uh, lesson so you, you do good to go through this question. If you face challenges, post your challenge in the group uh, and we'll be there to, uh, to help you um, be able to understand. Of course, this other file, which is based on today's lesson, Anatomical Position Part 2, be able to click it. I'm sure that is where the continuation is going to come from uh, for this particular topic. Sure. So there are other, other, several other, you know, uh, documents that are there on the site. We also have quizzes and tests. We'll be opening them one at a time so that you'll be able to at least uh, exercise your muscles in being able to answer questions that um, exam based and uh, they are helping you to prepare uh, your mind for the assessments that you are yet to write. There's a question from Nora. My question is that, uh, that's a message from the inbox. My question is that will the test and exams be set on different dates in gross histology and the biology? All these three come, oh, okay. Yeah, so all, all of these three can come in actually one paper. Yes, all of them can come in one paper, in a theory paper, that is, okay. However, there is also another paper that you'll be able to write and that will be the um, practical anatomy practical and the anatomy practical is categorized into two there's gross anatomy practical and histology practical the gross anatomy practical will be based on the DRR imageries and then the histology practicals will be based on the um, histological slides or pictures of uh, histological tissues uh, actual histological tissues or um, simulated histological tissues and you'll be asked to identify structures and uh, tissues. That is in histology, in gross anatomy practical, you'll be required to identify structures. For example, that image that you are being shown on the axilla, they can ask you to say what nerve was being held by the forcept. You should be able to identify that particular nerve. Yeah, so that's how basically it, it, it's, it's able to come. Yeah, so for the theory one, everything is mixed uh, yeah everything is basically mixed from embryology from histology from uh, gross uh, they, they combine literally anything from the theory paper yeah so that's that's basically it i believe that answers your question doc nora Right. Um, is there any other question? All right. Dr. KG, are you still in the meeting? Okay, there's a hand yeah, from no David. David, you may have the last question. Regarding the site, uh, the quiz and the test, uh, the quiz that will be uploaded, the test and the quiz that will be uploaded on the Medusa site, uh, are they like the actual quiz or maybe just something to help us revise or maybe 
to be a practical thing to the real thing to the actual quiz <laughs> okay um i'll lie if i say i have fully understood your question but it's an actual quiz okay it's it is an actual quiz in the i don't know what what i would say it's an actual quiz such that uh, uh, it will help you practice and be able to understand so we advise that you go on the quiz if you have fully understood the topic so the quiz is a topic based and we'll be opening them from time to time uh, so that we will, but we'll be informing you when to be open so that you prepare and then you handle it with the seriousness that you would have handled the, any quiz or any test that you would have written okay we advise that so that you have uh, the exam mode you have um, you know the, the the actual feel of how the quizzes and tests come okay oh yeah thank you very much i was wondering because i thought maybe to be more like revision i didn't uh, i didn't think that you would be graded for the same quiz or the test on them oh on the yeah they're actually graded whereby when you finish when the quiz is closed it will, it will show you actually your grades and what you got wrong and also um someone is asking for the link to the group okay to be sent in the group okay to be sent in the group yes or you can get in touch with any of the admins and then 